I'm Graham Ross uh, from Austin Smith Lord, and myself and uh, my four colleagues are representative of a, of a wider team. And in, the, in addition to those that are uh, represented today, we also have um, our colleagues at Urban Movement uh, providing transport advice. We've got uh, wave particle artists uh, providing um, creative uh, engagement with communities, Raiden providing uh, property advice, and uh, our colleagues at Space Syntax uh, undertaking data analysis and uh, uh, spatial connectivity analysis. So it's a very multidisciplinary team uh, who have been uh, assigned uh, uh, and appointed by um, Glasgow City Council to look at these four districts uh, and to develop district regeneration frameworks for Kilcadden's, Townhead, the Learning Quarter and the Merchant City. And as Richard's just outlined, these four are part of a um, series of nine districts that were uh, set out in the city centre uh, strategy, which defined these nine districts as um, uh, areas for focus with respect to developing um, action plans for uh, each uh, regeneration framework. Regeneration frameworks have a 10 year time horizon um, and they're very much about setting objectives identifying a future vision and the ambitions that the city has both for the city centre uh, collectively and for each uh, district individually with its own identity. And it's about then developing a series of uh, projects, both physical and non-physical projects, and establishing an action plan to identify what should go where and why, but also who should be working together and what priorities uh, and how to ensure that these ideas translate into action. And crucially, um, this is not just simply a case of setting a vision and ambition for the, the city. It's also uh, important to note that these regeneration frameworks will have uh, be a material consideration in future planning decisions. So it's very much about um, uh, trying to develop a common purpose for these, uh, these districts. We're at the early stages of the project, so it's great to have these early conversations with uh, the chamber and with uh, those on this call. Uh, and we intend working through the summer to develop a baseline to understand the issues, to then start to work with communities, uh, resident business and civic communities to develop proposals into 21 and then to draft the regeneration frameworks, ultimately to then present them for approval by the City Council prior to the, the next Council elections. So today we want to raise awareness about the project. We want to outline some of the key topics regarding uh, sustainable urban planning and a green recovery. But crucially, we've set more, more time aside this time for more debate, discussion, and the sharing of ideas. So we hope that the presentations uh, take no more than half an hour, and that'll give us an hour to have a conversation about what the next steps are, and we'll conclude by reminding people how to engage. The areas of the city that we're looking at go beyond what you, what you might um, associate with uh, the names of the district. So the Merchant City is absolutely about the Merchant City, but it also includes areas beyond the High Street and Glasgow Cross, um, along Gallagate, along London Road, and up to uh, Duke Street. The area of the Learning Quarter goes from the City Chambers all the way across to uh, the brewery and the Necropolis, and from the motorway down to Duke Street, so quite an extensive area. Uh, that includes the University Campus as well as, well as Ladywell and the Cathedral. Townhead includes Junction 15, the motorway, all the way down to Cathedral Street and all the way west towards North Hanover Street and the, uh, the Cannon Bus Station. And then Kilcadden's encompasses Buchanan Bus Station, Glasgow Caledonian University, but also the motorway, the canal and Woodside and round to uh, the, the School of Art and the Royal Conservatoire. So very diverse uh, areas um, with uh, some shared and some very um, specific local issues. We had early meetings with uh, colleagues in the City Council and with Brian Evans, the Professor Brian Evans, a city urbanist, who himself framed the, uh, the, the issue of Glasgow with respect to its role as a, as a great European city and its role in and uh, comparisons with other international cities, but also its role as uh, Scotland's metropolitan centre, the anchor point of the, the, the central belt and its, its performance being crucial to the, the national outcomes and national outlook but crucially also on the everyday city. And it's at that everyday scale that um, getting the basics right and understanding how those that live, that work, that study, that, uh, that visit uh, and that uh, are creative in these districts, how they then experience the city day in, day out, will ensure uh, uh, and play into how it performs as a metropolitan and an international city. So we're taking an evidence-based approach as required by our brief, of course, 
where we want to infuse that with conversations with yourselves and with uh, others with an interest and passion for the city to take those conversations through so that we can develop these action plans. And in these physically distant uh, times when we've been unable to uh, be on the street as we would have been, we've started to capture information, excuse me. <laughs> capture, capture information with respect to the, the, the city's performance. Excuse me. Um, uh, in terms of its, uh, um, the views that the communities uh, have uh, in terms of the, the ideas that they have through an online platform called Commonplace. And I'll give you the details for that later on. And there's many ways that you can engage in the conversation online through social media, uh, via the internet, but also via free phone line. And we very much look forward to the day, hopefully sooner rather than later as we ease out of lockdown, that we can then have a consultation on street in the communities and with those people who've got uh, the local wisdom and knowledge and intelligence to infuse this uh, project with uh, uh, an identity and an authenticity in terms of what Glasgow should be about in the future. So excuse me for not turning off my phone. Uh, it's now out of the room, so hopefully that will not occur again. And Judith, if I can invite you now to um, just outline some of the, um, the, the philosophy and ethos with, with respect to sustainable uh, urbanism and the framework that we're working to in this project, that would be great. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. So as uh, Graham said, beautiful projects have been asked to set the level of ambition for the DRS in relation to sustainable urbanism. And I think it's an area where we've seen a dramatic shift over the last couple of years, in part as a result of the climate strikes. But sustainability is very much back on the agenda. Numerous professional bodies and jurisdictions across the globe have declared a climate and biodiversity emergency, um, including Glasgow, which has a commitment to be carbon neutral by 20. 30. Next slide. Um, and although it's postponed until next year, it will be really important that the city both showcases what it can do, but also benefits um, from hosting of the um, Conference of the Parties on Climate Change uh, next year. Next slide. Um, but it is really interesting what's coming out of uh, lockdown and the global pandemic. It has put into stark focus some of the equalities that exist across the nation, but also demonstrated what a cleaner, greener future could be. And so many, uh, including Nicola Sturgeon, but many of us are, are asking that stimulus packages, economic st stimulus packages are used to build back better. Next slide. So Glasgow has the policies to support this and the DRS, the, the development frameworks, um, provide an opportunity to demonstrate how this can be delivered in practice. Next slide. So what we have done is drawn inspiration from Kate Rayworth's Donut Economics. And uh, for those of you who don't know um, that, that philosophy, it really captures as well this notion of providing a fairer, a greener society um, so providing a minimum social foundation for everybody, but within the limits of this environmental ceiling. And so we've interpreted um, that for the um, framework, uh, drawing out sort of six key themes which are relevant to um, relevant to development and, and to the city. So I will go through those in more detail. So firstly, um, on climate, we um, need to ensure that the DRFs enable us to deliver a carbon neutral city but also adapt to climate change we must make sure that we build a zero waste and circular economy and provide um, significant new areas of green space in the context of what we've seen over the last um, centuries a massive decline in our um, biodiversity both in, within cities and surrounding areas so those are the environmental themes, but we also have a set of social themes. So for existing and future citizens, we must provide a, a much greater levels of connectivity. Um, and others will talk about this um, in relation to the, to the areas, but this needs to be both digital and uh, through active travel solutions. We want to make sure that the DRFs empower citizens through a range of really meaningful education and employment opportunities. And lastly, that we create an environment that supports um, healthier lifestyles, looking at both physical and active health and also mental health. And so the TARP team is starting to look at how this um, should be applied across the four different areas, of, um, different quarters of the, of the development frameworks that we're looking at as part of this study. 
And what we've also been doing is to support that is drawing on some precedent case studies to inspire examples of what good could be, look like and what uh, could be delivered. So I'm just going to give you a really brief snapshot of some of the thinking that we're, we've been discussing as part of the team. So connectivity, you'll hear from um, us all, is you know something that we really want to build into um, the DRF. So this includes the creation of well-connected streets, which focus on people and provide that clean, creep, so greener and cleaner network. Um, we've seen what can be achieved in, in lockdown, but now we need to shift our investment priorities to focus on that um, active um, travel solutions to create these living streets and build off the success of um, projects like the Avenue projects, which I'm sure you'll hear more of. At the same time, we need to think, rethink our approach to logistics so that we can we take advantage of more consolidated logistics, removing heavy vehicles from our streets as much as possible. And then uh, digital infrastructure, again, we've seen how this has been critical to our economy during the global pandemic, but how can we build off the success of Glasgow's digital in innovation to build a resilient um, digital infrastructure network, which provides information, but also helps support a range of different working patterns. We see the circular economy as a key opportunity for the city to build on initiatives um, uh, by organisations like Zero Waste Scotland and Circular Glasgow. So this is an example of a pop-up market in Ilford where the structure can be repurposed, but at the same time it's supporting um, emerging um, businesses. We should also be making um, better use of existing buildings um, and encouraging businesses that are aligned with um, remanufacturing. So this is uh, the Fab Lab movement, which has taken over a, a number of um, disused uh, or um, spaces, existing spaces, uh, really focused on remanufacturing in the circular economy. And that sort of leads through also to opportunities around um, service industry and leasing. So this is a really great example, the library of things where communities can lease all sorts of different um, equipment at affordable prices. So it's creating um, vibrancy in the community, but also with a social value and playing to the circular economy. I think nature and creating significant areas of um, green networks and areas of green space is really important. Um, this is an example of the Green to Grey project in Sheffield. It's a great example of multifunctional design, which has both helped improve the character and identity of this neglected uh, business district in Sheffield, but also resilience. And this links also to sort of how do you create more comfortable public realm, comfortable microclimate for people um, to get people onto the streets, get people connected. And we have the tools to do this as illustrated by uh, this analysis in Sunderland. To meet net zero will require high quality new build, but also significant focus on retrofit of existing buildings of all typologies. So this is going to be a key area that we will look at through the development frameworks, as well as innovation around uh, local power networks, local um, renewable energy generation, battery storage, etc. like this scheme in Nottingham. So that is a very quick rattle through of some of the ideas and I'm sure you will have more and you'll hear also from my colleagues about how we're translating this into um, more detail within, within the um, subsequent presentation. So thank you. Thanks, brilliant slides navigation, Graham. Kept me to time. Thank you, Judith. Uh, and uh, as you say, uh, uh, your own is next up to then start to uh, consider how to um, translate some of the, the good practice and also that overarching ethos into um, how, you know, how we may then interpret that uh, at the district level. Your own. Yeah, uh, thanks for the intro. Uh, so I'm going to give an overview where we stand now with the translation of uh, the, the inputs and observations as shared last time into uh, uh, the foundations uh, for a strategy. Uh, we give a first glimpse of, uh, and, and of course, with all the disclaimers and with all the nuances, but on this sort of first conclusion on describing the difference in, in socio-economic performance of the northeastern part versus the southwestern part of uh, uh, the city. Uh, and next slide, how uh, uh, we imagine that uh, uh, this given uh, uh, gives a possibility to build upon the previous DRFs, where in the previous DRFs, we uh, uh, focus on sort of accelerating and repairing and upgrading uh, the southwestern part of the city. We imagine that with this uh, upcoming four districts, 
uh, uh, to work on upgrades are of course highly site specific uh, 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 based on the DNA of the different uh, districts, the problems and potentials of each individual uh, uh, neighborhood, uh, but to upgrade that area and uh, uh, to complete the yin yang figure, uh, if you want, the diagram at the right. Uh, we, uh, I shared a glimpse last time of what we call the possible drivers for change. So we imagine to develop uh, district regeneration frameworks, uh, what we call uh, from uh, the soft aspects of planning. So not top down, not only physical interventions, but based on usage and uh, user perspective. So what does it do for a community program? Uh, what sort of uh, transformative operations can we imagine uh, in economy and productivity, uh, but as well in the uh, sustainability uh, aspects as uh, Judith just uh, uh, described, uh, as well in uh, logistics, uh, as mentioned as well, and, and on uh, technology. The next slide. So we translated these in uh, informed clearly by uh, uh, the overview that uh, Judith just uh, uh, gave on uh, goals that we see for uh, uh, the further development of uh, Glasgow, and especially these four districts. Uh, on micro scale, meso scale, and macro scale, as Graham uh, referred to as well, uh, following the uh, everyday city, the metropolitan city, and the in international city, as outlined by uh, uh, the city architects, where uh, quality of life can be seen as a sort of uh, meta goal, as an umbrella over these uh, three sub goals, and we, where we propose that everything we do, uh, sort of programmatic and physical interventions on different skills, should contribute to uh, the development of a city that is more dynamic and holistic. Uh, that is more healthy and responsible, and that is more thriving and competitive, uh, clearly with a series of sub goals uh, underneath. Uh, and these reference images uh, uh, illustrate what, what this first block stands for, uh, the development of a city that uh, uh, works on a sort of programming and, and package of amenities that uh, enriches the city uh, and, and compensates what is lacking, and I would say adds what's desired. Sec next step. Uh, that contributes to the development of a city that is healthy and responsible, where you could think of uh, a sort of uh, a green and ecological interventions, where we still made the promise, uh, uh, what was it, Graham, six, seven years ago, to be able to swim in a Clyde in a couple of years from now. I'm still looking forward. Uh, and a, Siri, uh, a city that is more uh, pleasant and more child-friendly and more uh, playful and sportive. And last but not least, a city that is more thriving and competitive, where we make use of the uh, possibility uh, of the great accessibility following public transport uh, and how we imagined to, uh, uh, to take a next uh, uh, step in this with new type of production and new type of industries uh, and where we imagine to re-implement uh, a, a, a 21st century proof level of entrepreneurship uh, uh, in the city on micro and meso scale. Next slide. Uh, so we started developing what we call a series of what is that outlined for us uh, the larger potential of the northeastern part of uh, the city. And we see a couple of actually unique and great potentials. Uh, uh, so firstly, uh, and of course, extremely powerful and unique, uh, uh, the possibility for uh, a much more sort of integral, uh, we would even say symbiotic relationship between the large institutions, uh, the college, college, the university, uh, and uh, the health cluster, where we imagine that if you uh, really start to spatialize, what we call spatializing the triple helix, this, this could lead to a fundamental upgrade. Next step. Uh, where we imagine that if you do this well, uh, you're able to reposition this in uh, an even sharper way, in a more powerful way, in comparison to what's being done in Edinburgh and what's been, uh, what is happening in Dundee. So to create this triangle uh, that spans over uh, uh, Scotland, if you want. Next slide. Uh, and that could be uh, translated in, the, in these kind of images, where uh, currently, if I visit as an uh, uh, external critic, if you want, uh, the fantastic innovation is happening in-house, where you could imagine a little bit more spillover. Uh, this idea of uh, uh, a world fair, where the great innovations are shared in a proud way in a sort of uh, uh, expo, uh, uh, where innovation and public space mingles. Uh, that could be fantastic. Next slide. Um, uh, the next what if, if you want, uh, if, you trend, if you treat the M8 zone in a different way, uh, and if you, and I'll come back to that in a moment, this connection between the southern part and northern part of the city uh, in, in a different way, it can be imagined that uh, this zone transforms from a backside into a front side, and where actually this current warehouse zone becomes yeah, sort of key or core production and innovation area of uh, uh, Glasgow. Uh, again, tapping into the possibilities of cleaner uh, entrepreneurship and, and inner city uh, productivity and innovation. Uh, 
clearly collaborating with the different knowledge institutions uh, that can lead to in, in these kind of environments where you simply see and test uh, what's happening there, uh, a living lab if you want. Next slide. Um, and that could go together with the transformation of uh, the M8, where uh, the current thoughts sort of span uh, uh, in between uh, completely covering the M8, which would be the most radical and fantastic intervention, as you understand, but a little bit more costly, uh, where uh, maybe a little bit more realistic approach would be uh, almost like stitching and creating uh, relevant and strategic connections between the northern and southern part of uh, the M8, which could lead to these kind of proposals, uh, again, with a sort of green cover as the ultimate goal, but uh, maybe uh, bottom right, uh, a series of strategic pedestrian and cyclist bridges uh, as uh, key uh, stitches in this uh, uh, repairment act of uh, uh, urban network. Another what if or key potential is uh, almost like changing the mindset of the M8 and not seeing it as a, a negative element per se, uh, but as Judith described uh, in the sort of transformation uh, uh, and enormous developments that we can see nowadays in uh, a cleanification of uh, public transport where the M8 can be seen more as a backbone of the city where you can imagine with sort of uh, 80 miles an hour you drive into your warehouse uh, in an intelligent way and sort of uh, hop on hop off and continue your road until uh, 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 your next destination uh, uh, again zooming out on uh, this scale next slide and uh, where these kind of uh, uh, images could support that. Uh, again, where, where infrastructure is not necessarily seen as a, a negative element per se, but as a sort of proud backbone accelerating the usage and performance of this uh, uh, zone in the city. Um, and next step, uh, public transport uh, as supported and stated by the uh, mobility strategy uh, uh, and committee as well. Uh, a fundamental upgrade being required on the development of public transport, uh, where uh, the psychological effect of a bus is too minimum, so that simply requires and deserves uh, a new subway. Uh, and where, of course, this can be uh, used uh, diagram bottom right uh, for transport oriented uh, development, where this in an interesting way uh, 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 corresponds with and goes together with uh, vacant uh, and underused uh, uh, sites uh, and uh, uh, sort of pulling off an enormous development uh, uh, potential in real estate but also socio-economic uh, performance as you understand and leading to these kind of uh, images that correspond fairly well to the images that uh, uh, Judith just uh, uh, showed on a, on a smaller scale but also on a much bigger scale where maybe uh, a, a sort of a Grand Central Station could be the ultimate uh, uh, intervention that clearly goes beyond the 10 year time frame that we're talking about now, but it is clearly something uh, that Glasgow deserves in 20 or 30 years from now, where if we do that, again, if we do that, uh, uh, of course, this uh, 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 unlocks an enormous potential at the national scale, where uh, maybe the Edinburgh Airport can be seen as the Glasgow Northeastern Airport, and and you you can imagine a sort of complementary system uh, and model between these uh, uh, two cities, where uh, from the Dutch perspective we drew the parallel between Amsterdam and Rotterdam quite often, uh, where if you want sort of high and low end culture, uh, sort of roll up your sleeves and elitarist culture, uh, well, etc., etc., etc. So it leads to a series of uh, uh, not good versus bad, but uh, sort of empowering. Uh, each other, where uh, clearly the beauty of the highlands goes together with uh, the sexiness of the TGV network in uh, uh, France. Long story short. So altogether that leads to a series of what we call uh, uh, no intervention, uh, no regret interventions that you should anyway do, working together on repopulating this part of the city center, uh, working on an upgrade of the high street where this doesn't function anymore as a barrier, but simply sort of unlocks the potential uh, to make the jump to the eastern part of the city, to dissolve the barrier of the M8 and make the connection northwards, uh, 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 sort of inject and accelerate this development by uh, the development uh, uh, of a subway line. Finally, I would say, optimize alliances between these different institutes, number five, bottom left, uh, to unlock this potential of a productivity zone uh, in this uh, inner city uh, and all together uh, unlocking this potential of, of uh, functioning as a portal of the city to and from the northwest uh, and other parts in uh, uh, the country. All together, uh, coming together in what we call this uh, key diagram uh, describing the potential that we see of this uh, uh, for this area. In progress, clearly with a lot of uh, uh, remarks and, and clearly raising the question uh, what the key potential and key character of this area is going to be. 
Uh, and is it uh, and or, or is it, uh, uh, should we choose between one of them or can we actually imagine that some of the blend and come together and see the next page as an illustration as a sort of first glimpse of what we call this postcard of the future, uh, 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 the past, present, possible, is this a possible, uh, possible what we're uh, looking at, a combination of uh, a part of the city that is more connected, more green, more uh, uh, productive, et cetera, et cetera. And we imagine, and that's the last slide, and here we'll end, uh, to outline a strategy where we uh, um, develop a sort of step, step strategy from interventions that should happen towards interventions that could happen and uh, also outline them in time and in money and in uh, uh, actors to get the basics right and uh, uh, to build the foundation to work to more strategic programming and spatial interventions, period. Thanks. Thank you, Jeroen. So I'll now hand over to, to Stephen O'Malley, who at Civic Engineers has been leading on the, um, the Avenues project uh, for Glasgow City on behalf of Glasgow City Council. So Stephen, if you want to take up the story, translating the kind of bold ambitions into practical interventions on the ground. Thank you very much. And thanks for inviting me along to speak this afternoon. Um, Glasgow doesn't have a standing start here. It has momentum. The Avenues project has been in delivery or in development for the last three years. Uh, the Avenues project is 16 core streets across the city centre, budget of about 115 million. Next slide there, Graham, sorry. Uh, the block A uh, covers these uh, portion of the streets. You can see the underline off to the northwest, uh, past Stowe College, down along Socky Hall Street. It also includes North Hanover Street and Cathedral, Cathedral Street, wrapping around Calcadens and into the Knowledge Quarter. And, uh, and then you've also got Argyle Street. Uh, stretching all the way from Anderson Cross with the Glasgow Cross. The really interesting thing about the drivers for this design and the principles on which the design has been developed includes the uh, improving connectivity. Many of the themes here have been picked up in the points that have been made by both uh, your own and, and Judith, but connectivity, city image, city economy, redevelopment, of course, key. Uh, but the bit I wanted to focus on here was just enhancing and protecting the environment and how street design uh, needs to adapt to make sure that that's more prevalent and also picking up on the possibility to get your own sw swimming in the Clyde to deal with the uh, combined storm overflows. Uh, walking is a key factor in the city centre. The city is very compact and is eminently walkable in terms of geometry and, and, and distances. Cycling, active travel, we've seen with, with uh, the advent of the pandemic how important getting outdoors and staying within neighbourhoods, uh, staying local is and uh, cycling is a, is a really, really valuable way of dealing with the public health issues, uh, but also the climate issues and making sure that that infrastructure is, is, is readily usable. The other really important thing, uh, again, pandemic improved, is the sociability of streets and how we make, make provision for that to happen casually and attractively and the opportunity for informal play uh, within the streets and the climate resistance aspect. So how do we incorporate meaningfully green infrastructure into the streets in the form of trees, obviously, uh, providing habitat, uh, but also rain gardens and how we deal with stormwater. And Glasgow, through the avenues, has really made quite a lot of strides. If you get the opportunity on Washington Street, just off Argyle Street, there's some pilot schemes that have been set up and running for the last 18 months, which are worth a look. Uh, as you would expect, there's been a significant amount of consultation that's, that's been invested in getting the proposals this far. Here's a small snapshot of the various agencies and individuals and organizations across the city that we've been talking to uh, over that period. Uh, I see the point has been made uh, by Tracy Howe in the, in the chat about making provision for uh, elderly community uh, within the city. Here's a, here's a representative group of the Glasgow Disability Alliance who we spent a, a fair amount of time uh, with, on tours around the city looking at what the difficulties they encountered, the barriers that they experienced uh, in how they wanted to live and move independently around the city and picking up and logging and recording those issues and making sure that we properly dealt with them and incorporated them into the proposals going forward. Similarly, broadening out the learning and understanding and, and, and going to other places to, to see what's best in, best in class from other cities. This is a, an example of the city officers and officials from Glasgow City Council in Manchester looking at the infrastructure that's been delivered there but Judith made reference to the Greater Green Scheme in Sheffield with the Sud scene scheme. Uh, and we've also visited that scheme to take the best pieces of that uh, to bring them forward. Uh, 
Similarly, uh, the pilot scheme has also come forward on Socky Hall Street. This is an image of Socky Hall Street before the works were delivered. If you've had the opportunity to spend any time up there, this was the concept diagram uh, illustration uh, to give an indication as to what it might be. And if you, if you spent any time up there recently, you'll see that it's a dramatic re reallocation of space uh, within the street to make it much more attractive to walk and cycle. And the, the meaningful incorporation of trees, avenue of trees down along the length of Socky Hall Street. Looking forwards, uh, I like this, really like this little sequence of slides that shows how this part of the city has evolved over the last hundred years. So this is Victorian Edwardian uh, Glasgow with those little small links taking you out to the northwest uh, neighborhoods of the city. There's then the arrival of the M8, uh, which just landed like a spaceship down onto the, onto the city and severed all of those connections and links. And this yellow line here representing a reinstatement of that connection, sorry, uh, sorry, Graham. Uh, this yellow line representing a reconnection out to Great Western Road, what's known as the underline from Stowe College. This is the environment as it is now, pretty hostile, very, very car orientated and focused. Uh, and this is about making it really legible and straightforward and attractive and comfortable. The other key point to note here is that the vegetation framing each side of the cycle lane is uh, sustainable urban drainage in the form of rain gardens. Uh, which takes the surface water and, and, and deals with it in a much more sustainable way. This is an image of this really beautiful building set within the Sea of Tarmac. Uh, and with the proposals, the setting of this building has dramatically changed. The, the, the view and the uh, intuitive routing out under the M8 uh, and into those neighbourhoods on the city fringes becomes much more direct and obvious and attractive. Uh, and the building is a much more attractive setting. This is uh, the, the section of Argyle Street, as I was mentioning, from Glasgow Cross all the way through to Anderson Cross uh, off in the west. Um, and it's looking at the street in its entirety, this being one of the most glamorous roundabouts in Europe, perhaps with the toll booth sat in its, uh, given that role or presence within this space. A reordering of the, of the ground plane creates a much better setting and a much more balanced setting for, uh, for the street, for the square, and the prioritization of, of, of cycling within that space, uh, which is shown on the left moving down along Argyle Street at the junction with Buchanan Street, wanting to reconnect the Clyde back into the city and make that journey from Buchanan Street much more intuitive, much more direct, much more straightforward. Uh, and the landscape, the dressing, the environment, the quality of that being continuous and seamless as it moves down into the, into the waterside. I think then in, uh, the Helium's Umbrella, which actually is a hugely distinctive space uh, not just in Glasgow, but more broadly, and how it could become something much more positive for the city and how it's dressed and occupied and, and become something really special. And I think this final slide really just highlights how dramatic a change the avenues can be in the space and a reallocation of space. Here, flanked with rain gardens again, a reduction in the amount of tarmac and creation of uh, public space for the buildings to bleed out onto the street and also cycle lanes, meaningful cooperation of cycling and that being part of a citywide network. Thank you, Stephen. So, uh, as you say, in Glasgow is not um, starting from a standing start. There's already investment underway uh, across all of the, the districts that we're uh, looking at today. And uh, I suppose the question is then, beyond the avenues, what next in terms of how to enhance the connections between communities and uh, their, the destinations? And finally, uh, Nick uh, of, from Stantec is going to outline, therefore, the the kind of economic context of uh, setting the, the a green recovery. So Nick, over to you. Hello Nick, are you able to join us? Yeah, yeah, once I get the hang of the mute or mute button, it's only been well, two weeks. Between your mute button and my phone going off, uh, <laughs> we're having fun, <laughs> on you go. Okay, so um, as a starting point, I think um, we do need to draw out a bit about what the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, wave one, potentially wave two are likely to be in terms of funding and levels of activity in the city centre. Um, so I'll run through that quickly, brief run through the policy response and then some thoughts on what it means for the city centre. So. Um, if you go on to the next one, um, these are generally the macroeconomic drivers that we've seen um, impacted. Um, 
in terms of weaker travel demand, financial distress, you look at what the OECD are estimating in terms of international tourism, for example, um, and declines of 45 to 70 percent of forecast internationally. Obviously, for a city in a city centre like Glasgow, that's going to lead to um, major financial distress. In terms of lower output, all of the sectors of our economy are suffering from that. I'll come to that um, in a minute. In terms of the longer term implications, there are reports out uh, from Manpower Today, for example, which are suggesting that the UK has um, laid off more in terms of um, office-based staff as a direct result of COVID um, than had originally been forecast at the start. And that may well have impacts for how quickly our office and commercial sectors rebound. And um, the reason that I mentioned that is those centres are obviously critical in terms of the, the city centres commercial markets. Um, some of the figures that we've seen, uh, generally they, they range, but in, in Scotland, we're looking at a 2.5% contraction in GDP so far, 2% um, this year. However, um, if you look at the date of that, that was April 2020. Um, we're now looking at huge figures, 15% um, the OECD report out today actually estimates for the UK, um, possibly 12% um, if we don't get a second wave. So we're, we're actually looking at unemployment um, of a scale that we've not seen in this country since um, since probably the 30s potentially unless there are key stimulus measures um, which may be announced um, if you flick on to the next slide Graham um, obviously it depends on how quickly we, we return to a position of recovery and, and potential strength these um, profiles are, are based purely and simply on the um, the COVID issues. We have to factor that in uh, with how we emerge in next year after 31st of December this year relative to Brexit. Um, we've got um, that negotiation to look forward to for the balance of this year. The reason that these are critical is because our city centres and Glasgow city centre is an international facing economy will is likely to see most of the the effects of this um emphasized so the first one is is what our budget responsibility figures look like it's a v-shaped recovery um sorry graham i was on the previous slide still the second um looks at cyclical shocks what might happen in terms of a second wave if that comes forward and essentially what you're seeing is a lengthening of our recovery and then the prolonged recovery is a more persistent supply side shock now they're critical because the recovery period lengthens from 2021 20, 22 out to 24 25 depending on which of those analyses uh, come into play sorry Graham. So in terms of um, the policy response to this, um, if you could flick it forward again. Um, a lot of these tie into the, the green agenda. There's been various commentaries from um, economists, including um, UN, emphasizing the resilience benefits, the potential economic uplift benefits of, of green su supply and demand side measures. In the UK, they're already, and in Scotland, they're all already um, encompassed in policy through things like the UK Industrial Strategy Committee on uh, Climate Change. We have um, a 24 five target for net zero. In Scotland and in Glasgow in particular, we've looked at being carbon neutral by 2030. Um, so that, that places some key challenges, particularly on this part of the city centre. Um, in terms of the recovery principles, I've touched on some of these. We need to use climate investment to support economic recovery and the emergence from COVID. We need to look at how um, long-term behaviours can be changed through that. And again, Jerome uh, and others have already mentioned that in terms of the switch to active travel. I think there is an issue um, in terms of what people are perceiving at the moment relative to how people will feel in six to nine months time once we're back partially, hopefully back into a normal 
in inverted commas working environment, people tend to perceive change and the potential for it from the position that they're in. Um, so I'll, ju I'll just um, say that six to nine months ago, we might have been thinking very different things. And I think six to nine months, hence we will be as well. So um, we're looking at it very much at the moment in terms of the positive, and that's a good thing. We should capture that. Uh, fairness is a core principle in terms of sustainability and green principles. We've got some clear ideas in terms of the team and how we lock in with the areas of uh, to the north and east and also to the south, whether that's Site Hill, um, Port Dundas, or even to the areas of the south side um, by linking through to these areas. So fifth one, ensure the recovery doesn't lock in greenhouse grass emissions or increase risk. There's some clear pointers there in terms of the measures which government wants to see pursued as we emerge from this, um, particularly for building um, new and retrofitting um, energy efficiency measures, and then strengthening incentives to reduce emissions when considering tax changes. Some of these are obviously not restricted to COVID. Um, can you move on? Okay, sorry. So in, in terms of the, the city centre then, um, there's a fair amount of um, interventions which Stephen's alluded to, um, but also some of the, the key headline items, spaces for queuing, bus stops, deliveries and servicing have been maximised, 30% of on-street car parking across the city centre to be removed, and park and stride car parking at the SEC Chris Hoy Velodrome. I think the connections um, west along the Clyde, particularly on the north side of the river, are going to be critical um, as um, we try and link the city centre much more effectively to some of the nodes of attraction. Um, we mentioned the uh, COP26 next year, the links to that are going to be critical when the, the city and the city centre in particular is on an international stage. The city centre obviously has to play its role when uh, promoting this, the city to the world as an exemplar in terms of green economy, green measures in terms of movement and also how people live and work together. So some of the medium term interventions that um, the city's looking at. I mentioned low energy efficiency and high carbon heating systems, rates assessments to reinforce that, support for green economy apprenticeships, um, and as Stephen's already mentioned, the, the, the extent of tree planting across the city centre has, um, has uh, been substantially improved. Um, finally, on the, the last two slides, I think going to the longer term interventions, um, and the positioning in terms of district heating and renewable energy systems across all housing developments, whether that's new and retrofit. Um, energy service company for the city to make sure that we have access to renewable um, energy wherever we live. Um, structural unemployment support from decarbonisation, a circular economy and removing cars from the city centre. So what we've been looking at critically in terms of how we we actually um, position this part of the city centre for those is we've got an area that um, covers a blend of residential environments um, from social housing environments right through to private rented and owned accommodation. Energy efficiency is going to be critical in those in new and in new building retrofit. Um, interesting point today, the Chancellor's um, announcement of three billion in terms of green recovery funding, whether um, that's a drop in the ocean compared to the likes of Germany, I think it's interesting in terms of where it's being spent. Um, it is there to promote energy efficiency in, in construction, particularly in public buildings, um, schools, but there's also a 50 million pound fund there for retrofitting um, social housing and making sure that that's included. Um, given that we have substantial um, uh, concentrations of that, I think that's an important thing that we would want to take forward, assuming that that's uh, reflected in the Barnett consequentials. Um, access is a particular factor, limiting vehicle access from the city centre, but also promoting active travel. And here again, the links to the communities north, east and south are going to be absolutely fundamental, um, both in ensuring uh, that um, those populations feel part of the city centre, 
as part of an expansion, but also, as Jerome mentioned, in, in ensuring that uh, public transport access, while we may uh, feel less warm towards it at the moment than we did six to nine months ago, is enhanced and it's a mode of travel that people feel safe and comfortable using and it links to places that people need to be uh, going to or returning from. I think we also have to anticipate change in personal transport modes as well. Um, the, we're moving to an electric vehicle autonomous vehicle world over the next 10 to 15 years and the DRFs need to anticipate that both in terms of the um, the types of travel that we might want to do as individuals. I noticed that Middlesbrough is now piloting electric scooters and electric scooter hire scheme, the first in the UK. But also if you look at how an enhanced in, an expanded city centre residential and business population is serviced by EV and AV modes. So if we're looking at last mile delivery and um, business servicing functions, how do we service that? Where do we service them from? Um, there's a few options there which we're examining. And I think Jer Jerome had highlighted that in one of his initial diagrams. Finally, there's um, how do we embed um, Glasgow at the forefront, the vanguard of all the change this area is likely to see by this area in green thinking and the, the way that people move about. Glasgow does have um, a strength in places submission, wave two submission um, for a center of excellence in blue green infrastructure development, um, which was submitted by um, one of the institutions within our study area, Glasgow Cali Uni, working with, with a whole range of partners, Scottish Enterprise and the City Council. And it seeks to actually develop the models such as the, the use of water, for example, in Port Dundas, which has been funded through City Deal, a smart water um, management system, and extend that even further so that we have a city centre institution pioneering in this type of technology, building on Glasgow's established strengths in science and in engineering. <laughs>